first want to say, I know uh, we all live in interesting times right now, and I'm sure it's been a lot of sort of work and time and effort to take what you're going to do in person and convert this all to be uh, online. So just a big thank you to you and your team for still holding this fantastic uh, event and doing it virtually. We certainly can relate. Uh, I'll start as a great introduction. I'll share a few more words about Senior Planet and then we'll jump into our our lecture here. For those who aren't familiar with Senior Planet, our program, which is a program, as Gabriel mentioned, of the nonprofit Older Adults Technology Services. Uh, Senior Planet provides uh, technology training for older adults with the goal to impact, empower, and recenter older adults in society. Uh, so we do all different types of technologies. And previously, it was all done in person. So we had a physical center that was located in Lowry. Uh, so if you've ever been to the Beer Garden or Wings of the Rockies, our center is right in there. Uh, and then we also work in partner sites throughout the uh, state of Colorado, as well as throughout the uh, country where we deliver our programming. Uh, since March 16th, we've been completely online. Uh, so I know how much work goes into putting something like this on. Uh, Gabriel, we've been working to convert and, and prepare and deliver technology training uh, completely online. And I'm really excited to share with you uh, today, the lecture on streaming and smart TVs. Uh, and I love the setup that you had there, Gabriel. It's usually what I say too, which is as I go along here, I'll be stopping along the way to ask questions and we'll uh, promote participation and want to answer questions that you have, uh, but also encourage you to put your questions in the chat or send them directly to Gabriel. I'll be shifting kind of in between sharing my screen and coming back in. It can be easy to miss those questions. So I appreciate your help, Gabriel, and, and getting those as we go along. Uh, so happy to answer any questions about our uh, work, our nonprofit, and you know how you might get connected with it. But I know you're here for, for a lecture, so we'll go ahead and, and jump in. So let me share my screen. Okay, is that coming up for everyone? Just give me a thumbs up if you see it. I see some heads nodding. So today we're going to be uh, talking about streaming and smart TVs. Uh, and so I like to start with just a quick uh, introduction to what we'll be covering. Uh, this lecture will really be a introduction to what stream and smart, streaming and smart TVs are and how you can get uh, to really what is a, a very large world of different services, both free and paid, through streaming and smart TVs. So we'll talk about the term cord cutting, something you might have heard of. Uh, we'll talk about streaming and give you options both for how you can stream online programming for free as well as some of the subscription-based uh, online entertainment options that are out there. Uh, next, we'll discuss how you can use live TV versus cable. So I think most folks in the call are gonna be familiar with cable options, but we'll talk about live TV that you can get through the internet. And then lastly, we'll give some examples of streaming TVs and streaming devices, because there's a lot of different options out there. If you've been into Best Buy lately, you've probably seen a lot of different options in that in the TV and, and uh, streaming devices aisle. And so we'll just give some context to it and uh, hopefully some information if you're thinking about purchasing a smart TV or getting yourself a, a streaming service or a streaming device, um, a little bit of context to help you make that decision. So let's start with just a, a few questions. I'd love to hear from the folks here just to get a background uh, on where you're coming from. Uh, I'd love to hear if anyone has uh, used a streaming service before or recently, uh, and if so, what show or movies do you like to watch uh, through a streaming service? Uh, as well as, um, does anyone have sort of a story about whether positive or negative uh, attempting to watch TV or watch a movie online. Uh, and then lastly, if you do have experience uh, with streaming services, 
what are some of the platforms that you're familiar with? So basically all the questions are just about what's been your experience so far with streaming and smart TVs? Uh, and if you don't have any experience, what are maybe some of the services or options that you've heard of? So just to give a little bit of background. So I'll stop sharing my screen for us for just a couple of minutes for us to discuss. And you can post the answers in the chat and also um, say them verbally. I'll just add to that. If you haven't accessed um, some of these streaming services, maybe this might be an, another question for our answer for Clarence is, what has stopped you or what is something that's preventing you from doing that? Um, so we'll, we'll look and see what answers come in. So we have Netflix, Netflix Prime, Hulu, YouTube TV, Peacock, our services we use. Those all sound great. Yeah, Mark's on top of it. So a lot of the major options right there, Netflix, Prime, Hulu. Anyone maybe a, a show of hands, uh, not use uh, don't know where to begin, Hannah says. So yeah, we'll give you uh, some more details here as we go along. Um, and that was going to be my next question of our folks just not familiar with having used a smart TV or haven't used a streaming option. And I see um, Bonnie, you have your hand up. Did you want to answer? Did you want to provide? Yeah, an answer? Um, I I had an experience. I've done a lot of streaming and I've used Netflix. I've used Amazon. Um, I use Tubi. I've done a lot of different things, but um, I have an experience last night that I would love to bring up and maybe I can help other people through this. Um, I decided to do a trial um, subscription to HBO Max. Mm -hmm. And that's because there's a couple incredible things that are on right now. And so I took my telephone last night, put the app on, went over, you know, went to my smart TV, um, did everything that I was supposed to do, finally got the movie that I wanted and I could see it on the smart TV, but I couldn't get it to play. Mm -hmm. So I think I did everything and I could get it on the computer. <laughs> but I couldn't get it on the TV. So there's my dilemma. And, but I think other people might want to know more about streaming before you even deal with my dilemma. <laughs> well, and I think I appreciate the question uh, and would love to circle kind of back to it. Cause I think we'll talk about as we explain what streaming is for those folks who may be unfamiliar with the term, uh, as well as the, just in general, that term cutting the cord that we mentioned just now, what does that mean? What's the difference between, as you said, you're going to your TV to try to watch HBO. What's the difference between using a smart TV versus just watching HBO on TV like folks are used to? So they need a little bit of that, that background and what may, that may lead to what your challenge is. Uh, so thanks so much for, for sharing that. I have, I'll say just to, again, some suspicions of, of what, might have happened, uh, but of course, without being able to manipulate it and be there myself, um, it could be a number of different factors. Uh, so let's give that background for folks, for folks who are curious of what is uh, streaming. So streaming, I like to define, it's, when you use that term, it's just using the internet to watch something so you could be using the internet to watch a movie. You could be using the internet to watch a TV show or a music video. So streaming uh, is watching something over the internet in real time without having to download it onto a device. Uh, and I think I quickly, someone said in the chat, Erica mentioned download at a friend's but kept buffering. Right, so streaming, you're using the internet in real time to watch something as opposed to downloading it onto your device and being able to watch it later. You have to have an active internet connection to be able to stream. And so when people talk about cutting the cord, uh, most folks are probably familiar with using cable and you have that cord uh, somewhere in your house that connects and you know, it's coming out of the wall, it's connecting to a cable box and you're actually watching, say, in this case, cable TV channels 
through that line, through that cable line uh, from the cable company. When you're using a streaming service, it's actually coming over the internet versus through your, your traditional cable line. Um, so some folks, when they talk about cutting the cord, they're deciding to move away from using a cable service and instead are using their internet connection to uh, access online uh, programs, whether that's through YouTube, as someone in the chat mentioned, uh, or Netflix or Hulu, you're watching it in real time. So let me go back here to a slide that has those uh, definitions on it. So I'll share my screen. Uh, so cutting the cord is often defined as canceling an expensive multi-channel subscription TV service in favor of a st streaming media. And streaming is the transfer of data over the internet during a continuous flow. And I saw that Erica had a question about trying to download streams. So she was trying to stream something at a friend's house, but it kept buffering. You know, it was too, it was too slow. A little bit later in our, our lecture, I'll give some examples of speeds. I don't want us to get too bogged down in technical language, but that before you invest in a streaming service, you'll want to make sure that your internet is fast enough, has a high enough, what we would call megabits or megabytes per second uh, in order to be able to effectively stream a show so it's nice and smooth, so you don't have that buffering going on. Uh, in different services, you'll need faster internet based on what service you're using. And I'll have some, some examples of those. So uh, the first thing when it comes to streaming is that uh, you'll see a lot of advertisements on TV. And I saw in the, in the chat, a lot of folks mentioned the subscription services like Netflix uh, or Hulu. Uh, there's a lot of options out there. HBO Max, which you shared where you have to pay for the service. And those are great services and we'll talk about them in just a moment. But because they don't get as much attention, it can be easy to miss that there's actually a lot of free options out there where you can uh, stream over the internet, movies, videos, TV shows at no cost. And so you'll see on this slide a few examples, but there are so many more. Uh, YouTube has both a subscription service called YouTube TV, but also has many options for free through its regular YouTube platform. Tubi TV is another option. Uh, network TV websites. So if you like to watch a show on CBS or NBC or PBS, the chances are that the most recent episodes from that, that TV series are offered for free online in order to stream. And so I wanted to give uh, an example of what that would look like. So I'm gonna share uh, another browser for you. Of a few options for online streaming. So here you can see that we're at pbs.org. Uh, and there's a lot of options, as you can see, it's going through uh, some shows, but if you go to shows, you'll see it's loading. Um, you can watch a lot of PBS shows for free online as long as you have an internet connection. Um, and so you can see different uh, shows here. You can go to videos and see some of their latest videos based on their most recent programming. In PBS, because it's public broadcasting, in the top right hand corner, you'll see an option where it says live TV. And if I click on that, it'll Either actually take me into help you the live stream of PBS. So you don't necessarily need to even have a, a TV in this scenario. You could go online on your laptop, uh, on a tablet device that you may have, on a desktop computer. If you have an internet connection, you could connect in this case to PBS and watch TV live 
through that device while you're streaming on the internet. Uh, so I won't go through all of the options that are out there, but another one that I wanted to show uh, for a regular network TV is NBC. So if you go to NBC.com and go to their shows in the top bar here, you'll see an option that says shows. And I'll click on, I've never watched Transplant, but I'll go ahead and click on Transplant. And you'll see it has recent episodes from their TV show Transplant. And you can open one and actually start to watch the uh, most recent episode. So it's loading here. I'll pause so we don't have to watch the first advertisement. You'll notice a lot of these uh, online options for places like NBC or CBS. They'll have different online ads that you'll watch before it'll actually show you the show. And that's how they, they generate revenue online, just like you see commercials when you're watching on TV. But you can actually live stream uh, the, I'm oh, sorry, not live stream. You can actually stream those TV shows for free through the website. In this case, we're looking at NBC.com. Uh, so I want to pause there for questions about free streaming on how you might access it at home before moving on and talking about paid subscriptions. So any additional questions? And uh, Gabriel, someone posted a question while I was uh, talking. Yeah, to nothing has come through there at the moment. If anyone has a question, I'll just add that we'll get into this with the devices like um, Roku and Apple TV. When you have one of those devices, it's it's just like an app on a phone. So you'll be able to, if you had the NBC app on like a Roku or an Apple TV, I'm sure Clarence will get to some of this, but you can stream. It's just like going to the internet browser. Um, so it gives you an option to do that there. I hope I'm not mm -hmm. jumping too far ahead. Yeah. And that's, uh, let me go ahead and, and Gabriel, we are going to get to talk about some of the devices. But it's an important question about what is uh, a smart TV. So even though we're going to get to talking and explaining, let me answer it now because some folks, I know some folks, it sounds like you have a smart TV at home. But for others, you may have heard that term smart TV and, and don't know what it means versus your regular TV. Easy definition, a smart TV is a TV that has an internet connection. And that's it. So when someone says smart TV, all they're saying is my TV has an internet connection. And so I'm able to you know, go on the internet using my uh, TV. And if you have a smart TV, when we're talking about these different applications, uh, in this case, you know, I went to a web browser and I showed NBC.com and I showed PBS and there's a lot of other options out there. If you have a smart TV with an internet connection, you're able to download an app or actually open a web browser right on your TV and use some of these services, whether it is uh, a free service like we just demonstrated or some of the subscription paid services like Netflix and Hulu that we'll talk about in a moment. And there's actually some devices that can turn uh, a regular sort of uh, TV into a smart TV, uh, which Gabriel mentioned a, a couple of those. So it'll uh, convert your TV into a smart TV by giving it an internet connection. Awesome. Thank you, Clarence. I'm, I'm sorry to go ahead. Um, no, is a so um, a couple wish. of things came through. Uh, Rini let us know that Canopy is also a free service. I just want to mention that's from the Denver Public Library. I believe you get eight free movies on there a month. Um, so that's a nice service. And um, so the, Paula's question about how do you stream on the smart TV? And that's what Clarence was talking about and what we'll get into. Um, and uh, basically it's, it's downloading that app onto the smart TV, just like you would look it up on, on your browser. So you download it there and then you would see PBS. Um, yeah. And so I think another question, um, can this be seen again? Yes, as I mentioned at the beginning, all of the recordings will be posted to our website. Um, and at the end of the, of the lecture today, I will repost the link to go there. Um, 
and then I think we're asked a question, what is Chromecast? Um, I won't attempt to answer that one. And uh, how do you open a web browser on TV is, is what we've, we've been discussing. But I know Clarence will get more into that one. Yeah, so there's a few questions there and a couple of them I want to make sure we uh, get to them in order and, and it, and, but a couple are relevant right now, so I'll speak to them. Uh, one, the question, uh, Paul's question about how do you open a web browser on your TV? So Paula, if you have a smart TV, which I assume you have, so you want to, uh, you have an internet connection. I'm sorry, it's a little nuanced because it depends on the type of smart TV you have. So different TVs will have different companies. It's like a Mac versus into the sub. You'll, you'll have some different options uh, and it's uh, based on the platform you're using. But for the most part, a smart TV will allow you to download different applications onto the TV. And one of those applications will be a web browser application. Uh, so you'll be able to go online and use a web browser, just like if many folks have a, may have a smartphone, the same way you might download an app on your smartphone, you'll be able to download apps on your smart TV. You can think of your big TV as sort of another uh, uh, smartphone screen. Um, and so you'll be able to download a web browser app. Uh, it'll look different based on what kind of TV you have, but it'll be some version of that. Another question, Carol had a question about Chromecast. What is Chromecast? So Chromecast allows you to display a Chrome computer device. So you may have heard of Chromebooks uh, or a Chrome browser, if you use a Chrome browser on your computer. It connects Chrome devices to, your, uh, to other devices, but in this case, we're talking about TVs, right? So it can uh, display your computer screen, your Chrome computer screen, onto your TV. And that's why they use the word cast. So it's like casting your Chrome uh, browser onto the screen. So that's what Chromecast is. Uh, and so I know other questions are coming in here. I want to get through as much information as we have prepared to see if we have time for additional questions and I think we'll answer some of these questions as we go along. So I'm gonna to go to the next slide about subscription services uh, and then come back to answer more of your questions. In, in the meantime, if you do have questions, please feel free to post them in the chat and I will monitor those. All right, so this is gonna be the slide with a lot of services that you've likely heard about because they're subscription services so it, you've either used them before or you've heard advertisements about them. A lot of TV commercials, uh, ads in papers, a lot of uh, promotion of these different services. So the difference with a subscription service is typically you're paying some type of fee on a monthly basis. Uh, it can be anywhere from $5 a month for a smaller subscription service all the way up to you know, $100 a month for some of the major subscription services out there. So it can really vary in price based on what the service is and how much uh, different content like TV channels and movies that you have access to. Um, but they have some things in common. One is that generally they allow you to watch uh, past and current TV shows and movies really whenever you want. Uh, so a subscription-based service uh, like Netflix will have a series of TV shows and movies and documentaries in its database, so just stored on there. You could log in if you have a subscription to Netflix and watch those TV or movie services anytime you want. Now, you could, they have a lot of old shows. I don't, don't mean like too old. They could be everything from 50 years to... Uh, you know, just last season a uh, TV show uh, that you're familiar with, like something like Seinfeld. But a lot of these subscription services are developing their own content too. So take Netflix, for example. They have shows that you can only watch on Netflix 
because Netflix is actually the company producing those shows. So this has been a big change. It's not just shows that you can watch on TV these days. Many services like Netflix or Hulu or Amazon have exclusive content that you can only watch by having a subscription to that service. So by having a Netflix or Hulu, an Amazon or an HBO uh, uh, account. Uh, one of the things people really like about subscription services is that you can watch as much as you want. So you could watch a whole season of your favorite show, you know, back to back. Whereas a lot of the free services have a limit, uh, whether that is you go to NBC, you go to, uh, uh, Gabriel, you mentioned Canopy, having a limited number, it's through the library and having a limited number of movies that you can watch. So there's some kind of, you know, cap when it's free typically, but for these paid services, it's, you know, you can watch as many of the episodes as you'd like. Um, another thing that folks like is not only can you say watch Netflix on your smart TV, you can also download the app onto a smartphone or if you have an iPad or an Android tablet of some kind, you could get the application on a mobile device and watch the shows anywhere you go. So maybe you plan to travel and you could download uh, some of the app, some of the movies and watch them on your own time. So people really like having that flexibility. Uh, so next we're going to talk about live uh, TV and how you can do that through the internet. But I'm going to pause and come back, see if we have any new questions to answer uh, as well, uh, uh, either about subscription services or just other smart TV and streaming questions. One question, parents, that came through the chat is, um, and this is part of the smart TV conversation, where does Roku fit in? Mm -hmm. um, and I got a question, um, this I think will have to do a little more um, on an individual basis, but um, a person is watching CNN streaming past the 20 minute, um, they're unable to watch CNN past the 20 minute preview. Um, mm -hmm. This person has a basic starter package on Comcast cable. So my th thought there is through Comcast, you should probably have access to CNN, um, depending what your package is. Um, but that one, I think, has more to do with cable and less the yeah. streaming services. Yeah, Though you might both. be able to see it on a smart platform. Yeah, both good questions, uh, Gabriel. Erica, to your question about where does Roku fit in? Uh, so Roku, and I'm actually going to talk about Roku in a couple slides. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it. But to answer your question briefly right now, Roku is a company that provides a technology for you to navigate these streaming options. So Roku is not its own uh, subscription service. So it's not like Netflix or Hulu or HBO where they have content for you to watch and you pay them to watch the content. Roku makes devices that you can either attach to your TV or there are TVs that come with Roku already built into it. And it is the uh, service that you use to navigate the streaming options. Uh, so it makes it easier. It allows you to and makes it easier for you to use these different streaming options that we're talking about. It's not exactly the same, but a way to think about it is uh, Roku is like your computer. Uh, you know, it's a, it, your computer is not the internet itself, but it allows you to connect to the internet. Roku is kind of like that. You can get one of those, attach it to your TV, uh, and it will allow you then to access these streaming services. Uh, to the question about the CNN uh, that you mentioned, Gabriel, and having a, you, they have already a subscription. I, I think you answered that perfectly. My guess uh, would be possibly when you're watching that preview to confirm that you're actually logged into your account. It sounds to me if you watch 20 minutes and it blocks you after that, you may be hitting a paywall. 
Uh, so you may actually not be logged into that account when you're watching CNN. Again, hard to know without being there to see you accessing it, but you should have access to it. And two more questions came in, and I know we need to get to our next slides. Um, I'll just mention them and I'll offer just a brief answer and then parents can um, expand on it. One said, can you get a keyboard to use with the smart TV? To my knowledge, um, the smart TV remote allows you to find a, 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 a keyboard on the screen itself. I'm not aware of keyboards, are you? Yes, yeah, so the answer, uh, you're exactly right, Gabriel, that typically the smart TV will have a remote or some option where you uh, can use that to type in on a digital keyboard on the screen. That being said, some people find that uh, kind of annoying. <laughs> you know, it's, it takes a while to type that way, especially if you're not familiar with it. And they do have options for you to connect uh, with keyboards that you can buy that are specifically for connecting to your smart TV. Um, so if you're interested, I would suggest talking to an electronics you know, expert. So if you go into a uh, Best Buy or just call, you know, given the current environment and talk to someone and inform them that that's what you'd like to do, they should have options for you. Awesome. And, and Phil let us know that he uses a standard keyboard and mouse and that works. Yeah. Um, I'll also add this is another step. I have an Apple TV. I'll, I'll, I connect my phone to it. So instead of needing to search for all the letters, you can use your phone. That is an additional step, um, but that is an option. And then we had another question here on um, someone has a smart TV in the kitchen, um, but I think on it, there's only, only has a video cable connection and just RGB or component video inputs. So yeah. there's no place to plug in a Roku, Apple TV or Fire Stick. Um, yeah. So Clarence, maybe you can ask that. My knowledge is you need an HDMI cord to get most of those in there. So that it's another really good question uh, and a technical question. It, it depends on your TV and you might make a decision uh, looking at the options that I'm about to mention on whether it's worth the investment, if it's an older TV versus getting the newer one based on the price, they do have converters. So if you have, you don't have the most current technology, which is the HDMI input on your TV, uh, they do have converters that will convert. So you can plug in that HDMI cord that comes with uh, whatever technology you're using to set up a, a smart TV streaming situation. Uh, they do have converter options. They can be pricier. Uh, so it's about making the decision of does it make sense to invest in that converter technology on an older TV versus upgrading to, you'll notice if you go into an electronics store today, almost all the options now are smart TVs. Um, so they do have a base internet connection to that ability, but that's sort of a personal uh, decision. Yeah, so I see Phil sent a private message about just popped up about no having no HDMI option on your uh, old Sony. So how do you uh, plug in the converter option? So if it's got that RGB, you'll find, and again, I, what I would suggest is talking to someone at an electronic store and describing exactly what you'd like to do and what the current device you have. There are converter options. Um, I will say right now, they're not always ideal. Anytime you're dealing with a converter, you might find the quality of it drops but there are options to convert uh, what we would call backwards compatibility. Uh, so to use the current technology on an older TV device, but you'll need to uh, purchase a converter for that. All right, well, uh, I'll go along here. Please continue to add your uh, questions. Uh, I'll share my screen uh, and let's talk about now live TV options. So live TV without cable. So I've talked a little bit already. I think we know now uh, when we talk about cutting the cord, we're talking about not using that cord, that cable cord coming out of your wall. Instead, you're trying to connect to the internet to watch TV. 
but there's a lot of different options out there. So let's talk a little bit about the types of equipment that are available. So first, you can get an HD antenna that plugs into your TV and can be either hung on the wall or sometimes people just put it on top of the TV as a way to get TV, uh, live TV, uh, that normally would be transferred what we call like over the air uh, TV. Well, they have uh, more advanced options now that allow you to, to do that still. So if you're losing those TV channels, you can get uh, an HD antenna. They're available at most electronic stores uh, and are typically fairly affordable and you can uh, attach those to your TV to get uh, those channels, basic local channels that way. Now, there are what we call cable replacement services. Uh, and these are bundled channels that you're familiar with. So when we talk about uh, your local news channels, PBS, NBC, CBS, uh, ESPN, sports channels, so the, all the channels that you're used to, you can now purchase a service to stream those channels through the internet. And a few of those services are Sling TV, YouTube TV, Hulu with Live TV, Direct TV Now. There's a lot of different options out there. In order to make an informed decision, you're really gonna have to look at the different options because all of them will have different channels that they offer and will have different prices based on the bundles that you're purchasing. So I'm sort of, I'm not here to sort of promote one of the options and sell you on it over another. They're all valid options, but they have different channels. So you might look at one option and see that it has, uh, you know, your local sport, it has your sports channels that you want to watch, but it doesn't have maybe uh, the history channel on it. So you've got to make a decision, is that important to you? But cable replacement services, the whole goal is to be able to get that live TV option that you're used to getting through cable, but instead you can watch all of those live channels over the internet. Um, a little warning there, it can get pretty expensive pretty quickly with some of those bundled options. Uh, so you'll really have to look and make sure uh, well, we'd probably advise you don't want to have multiple services uh, just because they have different channels. You kind of have to make a decision about which one kind of fits your needs best. Uh, but live TV, once you have a uh, streaming, whether you, once you have a smart TV, you're able to use any of these cable replacement options on that streaming TV. And you can also use these cable replacement options on your mobile devices. So you could watch it on TV, you could watch it on these channels on your tablet. If you have one, you could watch it on your computer, on your smartphone, uh, that you can connect to live TV anywhere that has an internet connection. So a little bit more about the devices. Um, so as I mentioned before, a smart TV is simply a TV that has an internet connection and they often have built-in apps as well. So if you go and get a smart TV, it may already have Netflix or Hulu or HBO now, those applications pre-installed on the device. And then it's up to you to decide whether you want to pay for that subscription. And then you would click on the application on your TV and it would take you into that service. If your smart TV doesn't already have the application, you're typically able to download an app on the TV in order to connect to that application. But we always advise checking first uh, to make sure. So if you're thinking about getting, say, YouTube TV on your device, go first and download the app on the TV before you purchase the subscription. Uh, some streaming, uh, <clears throat> sorry. We talked a little bit about Google Chromecast already, uh, but Roku, Amazon Fire, 
Apple TV. These are all options that you've likely heard about, seen commercials about, or if you go into an electronic store, you'll see them all kind of bundled together. These are options for converting a non-smart TV into a smart TV. And really simply, the goal is if your TV is not already a smart TV, meaning it doesn't have internet connection, these devices, whether it's Google Chromecast, Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, they're a device that you can connect to your current TV and it will enable your TV to connect to the internet. And then it also allows you, it typically has some software in it that will allow you to navigate uh, the internet and download applications. So when we talk about downloading Netflix so you can watch it on your TV, you can do that through any of these plug-in uh, options. So that gets uh, kind of covered a lot of different devices there, and I'm cognizant that uh, it may be a little bit blurry, uh, maybe clearer for folks who have already used it. So let me pause again, come back into the chat, happy to answer questions about these different types of devices, either about your personal experience with them or if anything's unclear and how you might use one of these devices to stream uh, things on, on your TV. Clarence, I have a question. Yes. Uh, and I put it in the chat, but let me ask it. It'll probably be easier. So I understood that if you got like YouTube TV, um, or some of the other services you just mentioned, it did not enable you to get your over-the-air local television. Mm -hmm. So like NBC, ABC, um, and probably a real problem with getting some of the sports yeah. um, telecast, right? That is partly true. Um, okay. You, it, and this is where I, I apologize that it's a little bit confusing because every service is different and it's different in every region of the country. So my fiance's family, we have YouTube TV, not gonna sell it to anyone, but it's just personally what we use. My fiance's family is in Chicago, we're in Denver. Uh, our subscriptions look different based on where we live. There's different channel, local channels available on each subscription. So the short answer to your question is, most of these services, including, you mentioned YouTube TV, uh, will have some local channels, but they won't have all of your channels typically because the companies, what they do is they have to pay those channels in order to be able to offer them as part of their package. So they're kind of putting together their own packages to sell in each media market. Um, so the only way to figure out if you want a particular service, if it has the channels you want, is you have to investigate it. So you have to look at your local options and then you'll be able to see most uh, of these options will tell you, it'll give you a long list of all the different channels that you'll get. And typically it includes uh, local sports channels as well, like say in Denver Altitude, but not everyone will have it. So I, I apologize, I can't give you just like a straight yes or no. It kind of depends on the service uh, and they'll have some local channels but often not all local channels. Now I was told, uh, I live in a condo, and I was told we actually have an antenna on the top of our building that brings in the local over-the-air TVs, but I've never had the courage to try it. But mm -hmm. I am thinking about doing YouTube TV, and so anyhow, thank you very much. You're welcome. And since we're um, about eight minutes to the hour, um, there were two questions that were posted and I'll, I'll mention them now, Clarence, and you can decide if now's a good time to answer. Yeah. Um, one is from um, a person I think we've convinced here, said, how do you go about disconnecting from cable and starting streaming? Which one do you do first? Um, and then we had another question. Um, and I think this one will need to be a little more individual. The question, can you transfer a Zoom, which is what we're on, to airplay on a smart TV. I believe mm -hmm. that's possible, um, yeah. but Clarence, you might know more there. Yeah, I'll answer those in, in order. So for the first one, um, it, you know, it, uh, it depends. Um, 
Well, what I'll say, I'll say generally, if they um, happen not to have their mic enabled, there's no rule. Uh, so you don't have to do one of those over the other. You can certainly uh, get a subscription to a streaming service before you cancel your cable, but you may end up paying for two things at once. And you probably don't want to do that. I can say in my personal experience, I typically call the cable when we cut the cord and canceled our cable subscription. We called them and got that canceled first. And it probably won't surprise anyone that that can be kind of a hassle. <laughs> they try to, they don't want to lose a customer. So they kind of take you through the ropes before they finally cancel your account. So my advice would be to do that first, even if it means there may be a little bit of a delay, you may ha not have access to your TV channels for a bit before you get your subscription order. Um, so kind of dependent on your own personal situation, but generally uh, that's how I would answer that. To the question about using Zoom on AirPlay, yes, um, I've done it. You can absolutely do that on your smart TV. Uh, if you have Zoom pulled up on your device and you connect to AirPlay on your TV, uh, it'll display then Zoom on your TV. All right, other, happy to answer other questions here in the last uh, five minutes. Um, one more came through. Um, what do you think is the most cost-effective way to go about this versus having Comcast? Yeah. And we'll still need a service to have the, have Wi-Fi or internet. Yeah, um, so the most, the good news is that just dollar, uh, dollar for dollar, typically your streaming services in general are a bit cheaper now, not as cheap as they used to be, uh, but a bit cheaper than your cable service. Um, part of that, just to let folks know, part of it is that the streaming services are a little bit more flexible in letting you a bit customized. I, I, I use that word reluctantly, but they have some different levels typically, and you're overall likely getting less channels than you would in a big cable package. But who's ever had the experience where you have that big cable package, but you watch like five channels, but you're paying for everything. Uh, so that's where the streaming services are a little bit more cost effective. But in terms of your specific question about uh, the most cost effective way to go about it, it's very specific to your question. I'll do an end plug here to say that if you Senior Planet does have a tech help hotline, so a lot of times you'll find you'll have a very specific question for your own individual situation. Uh, feel free to go to seniorplanet.org. The very top, you'll see a number that you can call for individual questions because the true answer for you is it kind of depends on your, you know, what TV do you currently have? Uh, what channels are you interested in, in having? Um, what internet connection do you have? And from those different variables, the most effective, cost-effective thing for you to do. Because uh, as you can see what we covered, there's a lot of different options out there. So I'm sorry I can't give you a concrete answer, but a plug for Senior Planet, feel free to follow up with us, call that number, and we can give you some additional advice, more Thank personal you. advice. Thank awesome. you. Thank you, Clarence. Two more questions that came through, and I will post uh, that hotline number in the chat. Um, and I think that's a, a good number to call for kind of any tech-related issues and, and more uh, you know, to get in touch with Senior Planet. Um, one question is that someone got an email that their Roku is not supported after this year. They're asking, do I need to buy a new device? I'm not sure about that one. And then another person asked um, if you could just talk more about what AirPlay is. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, and thanks for that second question. I realized I was talking about it without explaining it. Uh, on the first one, uh, I also have to, I, without seeing and knowing particularly what Roku device you have, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. It does, it sounds like if you've got a message saying it's no longer supported, it may be an older model that may be a Roku thing and they're phasing it out. So you may have to get a new device without knowing more and I haven't specifically sort of looked into Roku's devices and if they're phasing anything out. Uh, I can't say for sure, but if you got a message saying that, it seems to indicate they may be phasing out an older model. 
Um, on the second one, what is AirPlay? Great question. Uh, so AirPlay is Apple. So that question that a person had before, they're talking about an Apple device, uh, Apple AirPlay. And AirPlay allows you to display what's on your Apple device screen. So if I use AirPlay on my iPad, let's use iPad as an example, uh, and I'm talking about using AirPlay, it's using, it's now displaying that screen on another device, typically a larger screen. So someone might take their iPad and connect to AirPlay and connect it to their Apple TV. And now whatever is on their iPad screen is displaying on their TV screen. It's kind of like if you think of when I share my Zoom screen just a moment ago and I uh, am now sharing my screen and you're seeing it, it's a way, AirPlay is just a way of displaying your current screen on another device. And a lot of uh, technologies provide that. It's not just Apple. So earlier someone asked a question about Chromecast. One of the things that Chromecast allows you to do is to display a Chrome device. So if you have a Chromebook, you can use Chromecast to display that Chromebook screen on, say, a TV screen that's connected to your Chromecast. I hope that's helpful and was clear. Do you need an Apple TV to get AirPlay? Um, and also, can you put FaceTime on the TV? I think that that's a good one. Yeah, it's a, both good questions. Uh, to be clear on the AirPlay option, it, it AirPlay uh, is on multiple Apple devices and isn't a specifically for smart TV. Um, so that may have already been clear, but I just wanted to uh, reaffirm that as an example, I'm, I have an iPhone, it has AirPlay on it, and I can display my iPhone on other Apple devices. They all kind of connect with each other on AirPlay and other services like Android, they have their own versions of that. Related to smart TV, so do you need an Apple TV to use uh, AirPlay? If you would like to display your Apple screen easily uh, onto a TV, you can connect, then Apple TV makes that possible, so it can easily integrate to it. It's not the only option. Uh, so I, wanna, I don't want to overcomplicate things, but just to answer your question fully, there are some workarounds for that, uh, but Apple TV, because you're working within the same family, it, may, it, you're, it makes it really seamless. So you can press Apple Play on your tablet device or Apple Play on your computer, if you have an Apple computer, um, sorry, AirPlay, and it will then connect to your Apple TV. So the short answer to your question is, uh, yes, it can work that way, but it's not the only way. Okay, awesome. And I'm also posting in the chat just Senior Planet's website. So um, there is an opportunity to follow up and um, they do lots of these workshops and, and work with older adults. So, um, you know, and hopefully we might do a little more around this, but uh, they're a great resource. Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, someone asked about canceling the whole Comcast package. I'll just say that. Um, if you are bundling with cable and internet, you'll still need an internet provider. Um, I personally use Comcast for that. And, um, you know, so some, I think that's where the bundle comes is it's nice to have both of those, but if you do get rid of the cable, um, you'll still need the internet device. So Clarence, I have another question. So you said you're using YouTube TV mm -hmm. and so you've cut the cord. Okay. Um, in terms of getting internet alone through Xfinity, mm. I've heard it's pretty expensive, which kind of really drives up the cost of mm. then adding on to it, which is why I spent about two years thinking about this and not doing anything. Because mm -hmm. uh, the combination, you know, $50 for YouTube TV, $90 for the internet, you're almost back up to your cable bill. So I just yeah. was curious if that's been your experience too. Yeah, and I would say um, certainly uh, it can, exactly what you said, it can get pretty expensive having internet alone. It's one of the ways the cable companies try to bundle things. Yes, there are, keep you. 
Yeah, try to keep you on the hook, right? There are some other internet options you may want to explore. And we actually, if you, uh, again, not to continue to plug our number, but okay. if you want number and just say you're looking for low cost internet options, we have just a short list of different options out there. Um, okay, thanks. Like com, you know, sure. essentials. And so there are some lower cost options outside of uh, the cable companies are actually special programs that many older adults qualify for, but may not know that they do uh, in order to get low cost standalone internet. Thanks so very much. The Denver Housing Authority has an agreement with Comcast where Denver Housing Authority residents, and I don't think it's only residents, I think if it's any kind of subsidized housing, they're eligible for a really good deal on standalone internet through Comcast. Mm -hmm. So it's something to check out. Thanks, Hannah. Yeah, awesome. And that's a great, uh, great information to know that there are some cheaper um, internet services out there. That is the first big step um, is having the internet provider and then um, having these streaming devices like a Roku um, tend to be relatively inexpensive. Um, where the cost can add up is if you're getting, you know, a couple of these streaming services. I think Netflix is maybe around fifteen dollars a month these days. Um, mm -hmm. So if you're able to stick to one or a few, it can. I think it can be significantly lower than having a cable package with internet. Um, and I think that answers another question we had: someone looking to pay nothing or, or relatively nothing. Is there free internet service? So I'm not aware of free internet services, <laughs> no. but I think you know through Senior Planet there might be some low cost, um, and then depending on the streaming um, platform you're using, some you know as Clarence mentioned have no cost. Um, others do have um, a cost or uh, a monthly membership. I think let's see if anything else came in. Um, Clarence answered that question about a cheaper service for internet. Um, and Christy just uh, posted a link to internetessentials.com. It's through Xfinity Comcast. So that might be another good resource. Yeah, highly. I was actually going to mention Internet Essentials. So thank you, Christy, for adding that uh, in the chat. Um, a great, not the only low cost option, but one of the great ones broadly available in Denver. Many older adults qualify and is $9.99 a month, so $10 a month. Uh, much more affordable than some of the uh, base cost options you'll see advertised.